two questions. So, so the subscribe is actually run by another thread and not the main thread. Well, the thing is, this is, I want to clarify that this is this distinction between the programming model and the, what actually happens. Okay. So you basically have this, you're sending an observer to something that can emit an event, right? You're, all you're doing, you're not executing it. You're giving a thing that can be executed to somebody else. Now, whether that thing runs on a single thread, whether it spawns a new thread, whether it goes, you know, executes this on a remote machine somewhere using some protocol and execute, you know, gets that, it really depends on who is actually executing it, right? You don't have control over it. So this is a programming pattern where you're handing off a thing to be executed to this stream. It's called a flux. I'll tell you what a flux is. So where this thing runs depends on the implementation of this flux. Like what does that flux do? Once it, once it gets this thing, it is getting an event somewhere. It has to take that event and execute this lambda. Where does it do it? Really depends on how it's coded. You could have a flux which just, just blocks everything, runs everything together, and then it just doesn't do asynchronous. Or you could have a flux which spawns a new thread. Again, it depends on that, right? The programming model is agnostic to it, which is why I said reactive is not always async. Reactive can be synchronous. Async can be non-reactive. Those two are two separate concepts. So that should be that should be fine. So yeah, it depends on who is executing this. Hope that makes sense. Okay, second question. If we make the program wait until the events are fired, we are blocking anyway, aren't we? Maybe this is for the demo, but yes, this is for the demo. And it's it's a great question. Thank you for asking that. This is going to be something that I'm going to touch upon later, right? Because the thing is, a program stops and ends at some point, right? For things to happen, you need the process to run. And for the process to run, you need a thread to run. You cannot be in a situation where like, I'm not going to have a thread run. Every time an event happens, I'm going to spawn up a new process in a new thread. Well, for that to happen, some other process needs to run and spawn these things. So it's kind of like you're just pushing things down the line, but that is ideal. You want to push things down the line rather than block 10 different places. You block in just one place if possible. Okay. And I'm going to show you how this looks like in a web application. This is a desktop application. So it really, it's not a good candidate to show how this works, but yeah, you need something to be running for a reactive stream to emit an event. So what the thing is, the fewer things that are running the better it is. So we're going to try to get to the point where it's going to be just one, and then that's about it. And so, you know, in certain frameworks, you can avoid even that one thing running. And that's an interesting conversation for later. But yeah, great questions. Thank you for asking. Uh, is reactive sources multi-threaded? I hope that uh, I've answered the question there. It is, it really depends on what the source is. It could be running everything in one thread or it could be multiple threads. All you're doing is giving it the behavior and saying, run it whenever, how it runs really depends on that. But the takeaway that I want you to get is that this is a programming model and you've kind of isolated what happens underneath. You remember how I told you that an iterator pattern kind of takes you away from whether you're working on a list or a map or a set, well, map and list, you kind of, you need to know, but you, you get the idea, right? Whether you're working on a linked list or a uh, hash set, it's like you, it has a consistent programming paradigm. This is kind of like that. You have a consistent programming paradigm to listen to an event that executes but the event that gets emitted and you execute a, a callback, but you don't have to change your programming paradigm depending on whether it's a single thread or multi-thread. It's like, it makes it agnostic. Okay, so that should be uh, the takeaway from here. So by default, this is a daemon thread or low priority than the main thread. Not sure daemon thread closes as soon as the main thread finishes. This is not the thread right now because this is what's happening, right? The way I've implemented, I've done a very basic implementation of this where, you know, when the main method ends, the program is ending. That's the reason why I needed the main method to hang on for a bit so that it emits this thing, okay? You have various different ways of implementing this. So 
whether it's a daemon thread or the main thread, again, I'm going to go back to that same answer. Depends on how this flux is implemented. All you're doing is handing off a behavior to the flux. It's its responsibility to execute it however it wants. Okay? All right. If I'm not wrong, there can be n number of callbacks passed via subscribe method for each reactive source. So is there any priority or order to follow here? That's a great question about multiple callbacks. Okay. Let me actually address that here. That's a, that's a great point. So here, I'm going to comment this out for the sake of simplicity. Okay. So here I have, I'm giving a subscribe to like a method to subscribe to a flux. You remember how we talked about with the, with this guy here, these are all individual streams, right? These are all individual streams. You don't work on the same stream. Every time you operate in a new stream, right? This thing works here as well. So this one is a stream and you're calling a subscribe on it. Subscribe doesn't give you a stream. In order to get a stream, you need to use something called operators. I'm going to uh, come to that in a little bit. But basically what you have here is, is this. You have a, a stream here. And then you're doing a stream.subscribe. Okay, this is what's happening. Now, this should give you the same behavior, right? Nothing changes. Uh, now, notice what happens if I do this. I'm going to do another one. Okay, so I have two subscribes to the same stream. So, all right, so this is working. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to explain the, the ordering part of it. You notice the order here. Okay, so this one ran first, and then the other one ran after. Okay, I'm sure there are cases where the order is flipped. Yeah, over here, you see this? The order is flipped, right? The other one ran first, and then this one ran. So the ordering really is not predictable. It is not repeatable. It is not deterministic. Okay. Deterministic means you can, you can predetermine what the output of the program is. The ordering part of this is not deterministic. You cannot say it is not changing for subscriptions. It's actually changing at an event level, right? Given an event, it basically does all these things. You never know what the order is going to be. So yeah, the ordering is not something you should rely on. All you need to care about is doing something on that thing. And that's what that's what you're getting over here. So flux acts as a source in the observer pattern. Let me think about that. The flux acts as a source. Yes, yes, it does act as a source. The, actually, the, the theoretical terminology would be it acts as a publisher, okay? If you use the flow API, so you have flow API in Java, which has like publisher, subscribe. Like I didn't even touch upon it because nobody uses it, right? If you go to a few books and reactive, you know, articles, blog posts, they talk about this. They start with this Java flow. You have publisher, subscriber. You're not going to be using it, right? Nobody uses it, but that's the, and that's the terminology that they use publisher. So that's flux would be a publisher. Makes sense. Yeah. You can think of it as a, as a source in, in this thing. So there's also this terminology called source and sync. Okay. Sync is what takes the value. Source is what provides the value. So these are sources and sinks. All right. So I'm going to put this back to how it was over here. And I'm going to comment this out. Hopefully you had a chance to work on this. I'm going to move to exercise three. Actually, before I do that, let me see if I have more slides to cover here. I actually have a slide which mentions exactly what you what you asked here in the question. So thank you for asking that. So here you have publisher subscribe, right? This is a publisher. The flux is a publisher. You have the subscriber here. So you have publisher dot subscribe off the lambda, which is what we did here, right? Now here's a question though. What if I want a list? So what you have here is basically like I want to do a I want to process an item one after another, right? What if you want to say like, okay, I need, give me a list, give me a list of items. Well, that's not going to work here because what you have 
is an individual element, control over an individual element, right? What you get with the subscribe is each individual element. Okay, what if you want the whole thing, right? For that, we're going to do exercise three. Switch to exercise three. I don't, you don't have the information to do this on your own. So I'm going to show you and uh, I request you to follow along, write the code yourself and see it working. And so it's always useful. And the other thing is you're going to, you're going to see this from now on in all of these exercise classes because you need it to wait. Otherwise, you're not going to see the result. You can have a flux in this publisher, which returns all the elements together in one chart. That is fine too, but I have deliberately added a delay so that you can see this happening over time. Okay. So here, let me show you this, this particular guy here, right? If you run this thing, it is going to run one at a time, right? So here I can just remove the additional delay that I have and, uh, it's just going to run immediately. See? All those things showed up at the same time, okay? So it's it's an artificial delay that I've introduced just to illustrate that these things can happen over time. So because of that, we need this thing in here. You're gonna see this everywhere. Don't remove it. If you remove it, you're not gonna see the output and you're gonna wonder what's going on. 